in the office that you can also film. So I just wanted to go ahead and share that uh, with you. So today what we're gonna be talking about is all about taking listings. You guys know we are currently running our loving on a listing competition that is going on right now. I know some of you guys have been bringing us screenshots of your advertisements. Right, we've been getting a lot of uh, people that are running mailers in command, uh, going on listing appointments, doing unsolicited CMAs. Uh, and so we're gonna be talking about a lot of those different tips and tricks uh, today. And so what we're really gonna go over, you know, I wanted to do this class because I wanted to take some of the concepts that I think are really important and not just you know, hey, doing a listing presentation, but really just looking at um, a little bit more of the high level of what do we do from a lead generation perspective? We know that for the first time um, in, in a very long time, when we are talking about listing inventory, uh, and you guys hear me say this on Mondays during our market update, right? Um, when we are talking about listing inventory, the amount of inventory right now and as we, as we ended the year, was down 20%, right? At the end of 2021, was down 20% from 2020 and down 60% from 2019. Now, we are very happy that we were able to celebrate that we actually saw an increase here at the office of 10% uh, ending the year, which was, you know, great considering what we're seeing as it relates to, oh, Sorry, guys, let me go ahead and let a couple more people in from the waiting room. But as it relates to uh, taking listings, now, why is that? Part of what we want to look at is what are the markets that are available in the moment? So I highly recommend if you are, um, whether you are sitting at, at your, whether you're here in the room with us, you have your notepad out, um, everything that we kind of talk about right now is going to be very, very geared towards strategies around lead generation, right? Strategies um, around mindset. We're gonna talk about strategies around marketing, um, but everything is gonna be focused on how do we go after more sellers and what are the opportunities that exist in the market right now? And this is a consolidation of tips from some of the top listing agents in KW. And I'm gonna note guys, is some of them are very, very simple. And that's the point. It's just about taking action and taking action consistency, consistently. So let's jump right in with that. All right, guys. Number one, we got to start with mindset, right? We got to start with mindset. Um, this tip, it says, if my life and the life of my family relied on me getting one listing by next week, who would I call? What would I be willing to do? right? How am I going to earn the listing? And, and I'm going to note this tip comes from uh, Cody Gibson. So Cody Gibson, many of you know him, he's the uh, president of expansion now at Keller Williams, but that's not how he started, right? His claim to fame, he's been a bold coach. Uh, he is a mega agent within the Keller Williams network. Uh, and the thing that was really special about Cody and, and how he taught is that Cody's claim to fame is that he would take 10 listings, every single month without fail, right? 10 listings every single month without fail. Now, with that being said, when we talk about taking 10 listings a month, I'm gonna know when I said that, I'm sure that for a lot of you, there are limiting beliefs that come up, right? It, it happens to all of us. Um, and yet with that being said, I want to give you this, the example that he shared when he made the commitment to take 10 listings every single month, he set that goal with his coach, right? And they had a really in-depth conversation about what would life need to look like if he made that commitment to take 10 listings every single month and what promises would he need to make? And what was that overarching commitment? I'm going to note a couple of things that he did um, with his coaches. 
he actually ended up bringing a sleeping bag to his office as a reminder that if he didn't set his goal of, of doing one listing appointment or setting one listing appointment every single day, that he was gonna sleep there at the foot uh, of his desk, right? That was the first thing he did. The second thing is he identified all of the different sources of potential listings that he could be utilizing in his business, many of which we're gonna talk about today, right? At the next tips, but we wanna start with mindset of, of that sort of that level of commitment. Then he had a conversation with his wife about the commitment that he made that he was gonna take 10 listings every single month without fail right, was, was the goal, was the commitment he made. Now, here's the thing. He was already a pretty good listing agent. He started doing his lead generation um, and he was fairly good at being able to secure that many listings. Now, he had a coaching call the day before the end of the month. He had secured nine listings. His commitment was 10. And I, I want you to put yourself in that position, right? You're feeling good. You're, you took nine listings and yet he made a commitment that he was going to take 10. And on his coaching call, the day before the end of the month, his coach asked him, he said, hey, Cody, you're, you're one listing away. So the question that I have for you is, was this a commitment or was this a goal? Right? Was this a commitment or is this a goal? And he answered and said, it's a commitment. And his coach said, I guess we'll see tomorrow. And right? I guess we'll see tomorrow. I'm going to know he did hit his 10 listings. His wife was not very happy because when she drove home the next day, there was a for sale sign in the yard on their home. <laughs> he, he did it now, I'm gonna know. I share that, I think it's a funny story. Um, when I heard it, I laughed uh, and he didn't end up actually selling his house that time, but he did list it, why? Part of it was that his, his commitment to himself to his family, to the to what he had set out to do was so high that he was really willing to do whatever it takes. And I'm not saying, hey, go list your own home. What I'm saying is, what is the level of your commitment? Whether it's a commitment to the outcome or it's a commitment to the activities that you're gonna take moving forward. Um, as we get started on, on the 19 other tips that are coming, I would say that this is probably the most important one because some of you will walk out of this class and will say, hey, that was a great class. I learned some things and not implement. And what I really encourage you to do is as we end this class, I want you to write down at least three things that we go over today that you are gonna take action on today, right? That you're gonna take action on today. Um, so yeah, so earn the listing and get into the habit of lead generating for one listing appointment every single day. I'm gonna know, just uh, to put that in perspective of what that could look like in your life. <laughs> if you lead generated for one listing appointment every single day and set five a week, 20 listing appointments a month, right? I want you to think about that. If you set five a week and 20 listing appointments a month, if 50% of them didn't show up and didn't keep the appointment, that is still 10 listing appointments. If you took half of them, how would that change your life? If you took 20% of them, would that change your business? Right? Is the more at bats we have, the more opportunities we have to hit the ball. That's when I was in peewee baseball, right? But I just want to share that. So this was really important. I spent a little more time on this one. All right, let's go on to number two. All right, lead generation. So we're going to jump right into lead generation. And we are going to start with one of my favorites, database, right? Database. Um, we are seeing a couple things here. So we are seeing people that have larger homes that are looking at downsizing right now. This is a great opportunity to target our database to do one of two types of downsizing, either downsizing the actual size of their home because they have too much space. We're seeing a lot of people do that where their kids have gone off to school um, or family members have moved out. 
right? A lot of empty nesters that are wanting uh, to downsize right now. The other side of that is downsizing their payment, right? Downsizing their payment. So when we think about downsizing, some of this is going to be downsizing the actual space. And the other part is going to be downsizing of a payment, right? Of a payment amount. We know that as of right now, people are more financially conscious than they have been in a long time. Why? The pandemic really put a lot of things in perspective this year in terms of what everybody's expenses look like. So people are more concerned about decreasing their monthly expenses. They want to take advantage um, of, of one, also lowering their carbon footprint. That's something that is really big in the media right now is people kind of decreasing that. Uh, taking advantage of low interest rates. I know that they've gone up a little. They are still very, very low, right? They're still under double digit interest rates. I know people that bought property for 17, 18% interest rates. Interest rates are low in the grand scheme of things right now. Um, and then of course, lower monthly payments, right? Uh, one of the trends that we've seen a lot within the past year is people saying, hey, I'm gonna move out of this urban area, Los Angeles County, Orange County, and move out further to places like um, Riverside, right? Bakersfield, uh, San Bernardino County, a lot of those areas that we see a lot of activity in, or even moving out of state, right? We're seeing a lot of that as well. So this is a really good opportunity to have that conversation with your clients about one, where are the home values? Because we know appreciation has been uh, huge right now. And two is what is that long-term plan for them to potentially downsize either their payment or their space? Another thing that we see sometimes, especially with a lot of empty nesters, um, in fact, I was talking to, to one of our associates that they actually just decided to downsize as well. Uh, and one of the things that was, was interesting is they didn't realize how much stuff they had, right? How many things they had. So this is the other piece is even partnering with an estate sale or a yard sale, a partner to help sellers where that's a big concern, right? Logic makes people think, but emotion makes people act. And so we can give them all of the logical reasons that they should move forward with potentially selling their home. And sometimes it's the emotional reason that is going to actually have them pump the brakes and kind of stop, uh, stop moving forward. We're going to, we're going to get back to some of the emotional reasons and some of what that looks like. All right. So jumping over lead generation. What about condos? We're seeing a lot more activity uh, in the condo sector right now and in downtown areas, right? One of the other things that happened during the pandemic is all of a sudden people wanted more space, right? They were enclosed. Uh, they were, you know, a little bit more tight, having to spend a lot more time at home. Some people are working from home permanently. They have home offices. They weren't using a lot of the communal things as much anymore because what happened? Well, they weren't able to, a lot of those things closed down. And now that they've gotten used to that, uh, their behavior has changed, right? Consumer behavior, life behavior has changed a little bit. That means a lot of times those group communal living spaces, um, if they don't have a lot of those amenities or it feels a little bit smaller or somebody's job has maybe changed, they, those, those are becoming a little bit less sought after. So that's another area where we have not just a, you know, circle prospecting is great when we look at going after a certain area, but when we can have a more targeted conversation, we can increase the level of our efficiency. We can increase the level of our conversion over time. So this is going to be another area um, as well. All right. Number four, marketing to young buyers and sellers to the three-year plan. Real estate is a long game right? Real estate is a long game. We know that some of the tactics that we're going to talk about are where can we get conversions immediately. And we also know, and especially for some of our younger agents um, as well, this is going to be really important as well, because we know that when somebody is potentially at getting into a property and they're buying, those are our future sellers, right? Those are our future sellers. Now, one of the things that we've seen a lot of, we are obviously having a lot of um, affordability issues right now. There's a lot of inventory issues right now. I saw a really interesting article uh, that came out the other day that said that there was a high percentage 
of buyers that regretted something about the home they purchased in the last two years, right? I think it was something like set to the tune of like 75%. Here's the thing is what if we could use that in our advantage as a communication uh, piece with some of our buyers to generate them as sellers in the future. What do I mean by that? Um, in this type of market where we see consistent appreciation, we can also encourage some of our clients that are maybe on the buy side or some that have bought more recently and maybe are not as happy with their home of what does this three-year plan look like? What if we could get them in a home since they're paying a rent anyways, right, where they could now build up equity and then sell an upgrade so that they could slowly but surely get into their dream home. So a little bit of a different uh, concept here, right, a little bit of a different concept here. And yet, if we have buyers that are on the fence or they're refusing to put in offers, which happens, right? They're willing to see a million homes and there's something that's not absolutely perfect about that property. And, and so they're not putting in offers that also creates burnout for you guys, right? So what if we could help them to gradually upgrade to that next property since either way they are paying a monthly payment on rent anyways, why not put that against an asset that, that is gonna appreciate in value over time? On the flip side of that, if you have any newer buyers that have purchased in the last couple of years and they are not, uh, maybe they're not 100% with their home, maybe they see how much appreciation there is in the market and they wanna take advantage of that. Uh, we used to see that the trend was about every seven to 10 years is when somebody would relocate or move. We've seen that decrease dramatically in some demographics, right? In some demographics, um, usually age-based demographics, for a really simple reason, job opportunities, right? Job opportunities or job changes is a big part of that, right? It's a big part of that. Family changes that happen earlier in life um, versus, you know, in kind of that mid years in life. So this is a really good tactic to also go after some of your more recent um, buyer clients within the past few years and have a conversation about the appreciation that they've seen to see if it might be worth making a change. This is one of the clients, uh, so I'll give you guys an example of mine. I had a client from 2018 that bought a, uh, bought a property at the end of 2018. Uh, and in the begin end of 2020, beginning of 2021, to about three years, right? To about three years, they sold and bought again. Why? Because appreciation was at an all-time high, they were not 100% that the home that they were in was their dream home. And they saw the opportunity to do that upgrade at that time. So this is a really great tactic as well. Number five, divorce sales, right? So I'm going to know there are going to be some of these tactics um, that, I, that I talk about that are going to be a little bit more emotional, that are going to be a little bit more sensitive. And so we want to talk about that as well. It, the fact of the matter is, there are certain types of markets that people don't necessarily want to sell, but they may have to sell. And divorces is one of those. Because what happens in a divorce, all of a sudden, um, you have individuals that are splitting assets. We saw that during COVID-19, uh, the number of divorces spiked. There are individuals in that case that then want to sell. So a couple things on tips and best practices here. Building a relationship with divorce attorneys, right? Building a relationship with divorce attorneys. Um, establishing neutrality with both parties. This is going to be huge, right? And I'm going to give you a tip on if you are too close to one side of the divorce, what is another option that you can have? One of the things that tends to happen sometimes um, in, in divorces, especially if they are coming from your sphere of influence, is that you usually will have a closer relationship to one side of the party. And what happens is the person on the other side of the party does not want to work with you because they think that you're gonna be biased. So there's a couple of different techniques that you can use to secure a listing like that. Um, the first, if they are absolutely refusing to work with you because they feel that you're biased, because they feel that you have, uh, 
you know, too much scope of one side of the relationship, you can have a co-listing with an agent on that kind of represents each party's interest so that both parties have to come to an agreement. This is if the court is not involved. So if the court's involved, it's a little bit different, right? We start getting into actually working with attorneys. Um, you can refer it so that you get a portion of that commission because you already have the relationship. You're able to establish that introduction. Why not partner with, with a coworker in the office, a friend and say, hey, what if we did this as a referral? I have all the information on it. Um, and yet they want to work with someone that maybe is not as emotionally invested in the outcome, because that's the other challenge that we see in divorces is if the part, if the two parties um, cannot come to an agreement, then they may feel that they were, you know, that they didn't, one party didn't have the necessary support that the other party had because of those pre-existing relationships. So this is why having neutrality with both parties is going to be so, so important. We also want to make sure that we are respecting the privacy of the clients. And just a tip, once you are in a divorce sale, um, that on all communication, you want to make sure that you have communication in writing just to protect yourselves from liability. But this is going to be a really um, another, you know, just more kind of closer to decision making point type market. All right. Jumping on over migration patterns, migration patterns. This is going to be a little bit more um, high level, but I'm going to give you guys some samples of what we have seen in an office just in the past year. We have seen an increasing number of referrals, outbound referrals, going from California that, that our agents have collected checks on, right, referral fees on, to uh, Texas. Texas is going to be a huge part. Uh, and one of the big markets. Texas, we're seeing a high number of outbound referrals that are going to Arizona, right? We're, we've seen uh, quite a few that have gone into Florida, but I would say the two highest that we've seen uh, most recently has definitely been uh, to Arizona and to Texas. Now, here's the thing. We also wanna know, hey, who's moving to California? Right, who's moving out into this area? Those are more for your buyer side, but for your listings, it's who's moving out. So I would have one, a couple of things. Really great partners in areas where you are seeing um, those migration patterns happening so that you can also collect a commission on the flip side of it as well. And those are gonna be great opportunities for you to establish a relationship with the homeowner that is looking at moving out of state. Right. I get communicate. I got a communication uh, from a family member uh, about, I don't know, two months ago or so. And one of the questions that they asked uh, that they ask has been, you know, they were moving. They're moving to Texas. Right. Well, they guess what? They own a home here in California and they plan to move to Texas in eight months. Now, because I made sure to connect them with an agent out in Texas and could send them alert in Texas. You better believe I'm also sending them information on their property here, right? Because that is another opportunity. We've identified a potential seller that is going to be uh, moving out of state. Uh, thank you, Henry. I see we've also seen a few uh, migrations out to Tennessee and Kentucky, right? So Tennessee and Kentucky. I'm going to give you guys a note as well. One of the things that's really cool about migration patterns, a tip that is available for you. If you go into command, to your command account, and you go to this tab on referrals, right? If you go to the tab on referrals uh, and then you go to grow your network, right? So command to referrals to grow your network. This is where you're able to find additional kind of, um, you know, additional referral partners and things like that if you're sending or you're receiving a referral from out of the state or out of the area. There's a really cool feature. So on the top left is where we usually will put in the zip code or the city that we're looking at. But there's a little drop down tab. So you can search by city, you can search by office, right? You can search by zip code. There's gonna be a little drop down. You can click on and put migration or referral patterns. And you will actually see literally a map that shows where are people moving to from your area, if you have a farm area, and where are people coming from to that area? Here's why this is really great, is that 
if I know that the majority of people in Downey that are moving out of state are moving to Texas and Arizona, might I want to do a targeted Facebook ad in Lead Accelerator that says, hey, looking to move to Texas, Arizona, or anywhere out of state, I can help. Because guess what? When they move, more than likely, a lot of them have property to sell, right? So it's a little bit different than kind of soliciting straight for the listing because the need to sell is not the first need right now. The need is, hey, I'm going to be moving out of state. I need to start looking. I need to start getting familiar with the other side. It's the same thing when we attack a FISBO that is, or a FISBO that is like, no, 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 I'm going to sell it myself. And we say, great why don't I, I compete to be the buyer's agent and help you find your next home? And all of a sudden, when they find a home they like, they're like, oh my gosh, I need to sell. Nobody's accepting my offer contingent. And you've established that relationship, right? As, as their agent of choice and now have the opportunity to take the listing. So it's an extra step. And yet we want to get into the mindset of where the clients are here. Okay, number seven, Facebook Live. Facebook Live as a lead generation tool, right? Facebook is very interesting. We know that um, when we look at the average age of sellers, it tends to be in a higher age range. Right? It tends to be uh, in a, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you, my friend. It tends to just be in a higher age range. Now, if we think about that, that demographic is the same age demographic, this has been studied, that lives on Facebook, that is scrolling on Facebook at night, right, as they scroll through their, their phone. Everybody has the mini computers in their pocket, and Facebook, if we look at the different types of social media, so don't get me wrong, I am a big proponent of all different types of social media. TikTok, right? I think Twitter is a great social media platform. Instagram is a great social media platform. Facebook is a phenomenal social media platform. With that being said, when we are looking at the different types of lead generation that we do, we are capturing different demographics on each social media platform. And Facebook is the higher aged demographic, which just by that, tends to be more homeowners, individuals that already own a home versus we tend to see a little bit of a younger demographic on Instagram and an even younger demographic on TikTok, right? TikTok, a lot of that is gonna be our future clients. Instagram, um, we that, that age demographic tends to be in the, the first time home buyers age range, right? And then you have what is happening on Facebook. So Facebook Live. Now, you can also post, on Facebook, right? You can post uh, you can post native videos that you're actually uploading. You can post links to things. You can post photos, and yet where the views are on Facebook is on Facebook Live, right? Facebook Live broadcasts to about 3.5 billion people. Uh, there is daily watch time. What happens? You start watching a video on Facebook Live, and it automatically rotates to the next one. We've seen that this is quite the number of views on Facebook Live has quadrupled in the last year. And Facebook Live produces six times as many interactions as other types of video, native video that is posted, not link videos, um, on, on the platform, and 10 times the comments, right? The videos are also watched three times longer. So if I am doing content, Doing a Facebook Live video is going to be the biggest bang for my buck of content creation on that particular platform. So a couple of ideas of things you can do on Facebook Live. Market updates. Market updates, right? Especially talking about home appreciation. Uh, I've seen some that are like, guess the price of this home, right? Now, the one thing I want you to be aware of when you're doing Facebook Live is making sure that at the end of every Facebook Live and potentially multiple times throughout, you have some type of call to action, right? Include calls to action, engage. If you see people live and you can see them and their names coming up, right? Engage with those individuals. Invite them to engage with your content. Hey, where are you tuning in from? 
right? Hey, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to want to engage them throughout. And you're going to want to call to action. So what is the outcome that you want? You know, if it's a market update, if you need more information on, uh, or you want evaluation of your home, drop an emoji in the comments or send me a DM, right? Those type of things so that you can identify who those leads are. You're also going to want to engage with the comments and engage with the likes. If you can see who is watching, why not send a message right after the video, if it was a video on home values, right? Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, now this is a message, right? Thank you so much for tuning in onto my live. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Did you have any question or did you wanna know the value of your home? Or is there any questions that I might be able to help you with, right? As we wanna go a step further and use that content to truly engage. All right, Facebook ads, Facebook ads, boosting posts. So a couple things here. I want to share the difference between a boosted post and creating an advertisement. A boosted post is I create a piece of content, whether video, um, whether it's a regular photo, et cetera. And when I boost the post, it's so that I can get in front of more people. What it does not do is get me contact information. This is more to encourage exposure and engagement, right? This is a little bit different. So generally when you boost a post, it's just to showcase it to more people, but you're not necessarily getting contact information. You may get a comment, you may get a like, right? But more so you're getting eyeballs. What we see is about $100 um, will get you 10,000 people on a boosted post, right? So that's part of that. Now, creating an ad, right? Creating an ad is a little bit different. Boosted posts is all about staying top of mind and jumping into the feed of people that don't already follow you. An ad is generally gonna be a little bit different. Um, when we do an ad, we may, there's two types of ads you can do. You can do a targeted ad to outside of your database. And then in command, you can actually target to your database as well. Um, if you are looking for top of mind, I think the targeting to your database is great for top of mind, similar to a boosted post. When you're looking at creating uh, more of an ad, you're also looking at finding new leads to come out from outside of your sphere. Diana does a great class on this, on specifically how to create the ad advertisements in command. This is going to be, if you go into command, this is where we go to uh, campaigns. What I'm talking about right now is the social media uh, lead accelerator campaigns. Now, those are a little bit different. What we're trying to capture is contact information. So we can run a couple different types of ads, share stats, people respond to stats, use the home appreciation script. Why not offer a free home evaluation, right? Or a free market analysis of your home, or would you like to know what your home is worth? Click learn more for a free home analysis, right? Those are going to be the type of scripts you want to create curiosity. Do you know that appreciation uh, is, has been a record breaking 14%? Do you know the value of your home? Would you like to? Click learn more for a free home evaluation, right? All of those little things, it's about creating the content meant to grab that type of client, right? That type of client. Now, Diana does a great class on this. In command, under the command your business, there is step-by-step -step videos on this. And if you need help, come see me too, right? I, I also will help you with this because this is a huge feature that you have available to you. Now, on top of that, you can go above and beyond and actually even do targeted mailers with the similar kind of template and script to a specific location through command. So that's gonna be another piece um, that it kind of just layers on top of this. Mastering the virtual open house, number nine. Mastering the virtual open house. Um, a couple of things. So a lot of times when we think about virtual uh, or open houses in general, we think buyers. I want to flip your mindset on that, right? I want to flip your mindset on that and why we're going to talk about doing uh, virtual open houses as well. Obviously, we know that when we take listings, we also generate buyers, right? We know that there is going to be a percentage of people that when they walk into an open house, they are coming into that open house because they are interested in buying a home. However, there are also people that walk into an open house because they want to know what their home is worth. 
So in-person open house, I want to, with the neighbors, I'm not just inviting them to an open house. I'm talking about home appreciation. And when they walk into the open house, one of my favorite scripts um, after welcoming them to the open house uh, used to be, you know, in my experience, so this is the script, right? In my experience, when people walk into an open house, uh, generally they're coming for one of two reasons. Either you're interested in potentially buying a home or you're wondering how much your home is worth, which are you, right? Which are you, right? We want to identify who our sellers are. Now, let's flip that over to virtual open houses and why we do virtual open houses. Virtual open houses is going to allow you to do a couple things. It's going to allow you to, uh, if you set up a Zoom room as a registration required, and you do your virtual open houses through Zoom, it allows you to do a couple things. One, it allows you to collect contact information from leads, similar to a sign-in sheet. The difference is it allows you to get more exposure than just the exposure of the people that are attending your open house. In-person open house, why not add a virtual open house on top of it to maximize the time that you're spending there and get eyeballs from everybody that wasn't able to attend your open house? Because here's the thing, it will, just like the people that walk into an open house, some of them are buyers and some of them are potential sellers, right? Virtual open house is the same thing. Some of them are buyers, and some of them are potential sellers. But now you've doubled, maybe even quadrupled the number of eyeballs that you have and the impact that that one open house has because you're also targeting digitally, right? Because you're also targeting digitally. Now, here's the thing. In follow-up, yes, I'm going to invite them to private, safe, open house into a person, but I'm going to go above and beyond this and also ask them, do they have a home to sell? Would they like to know the value of their home? Do they need to sell in order to buy? There are all different ways of asking the same question, right? But we want to identify who our homeowners are. Here's the other piece. The virtual open house becomes marketing content for you to go do more video ads, right? To create more of a lead generation opportunity. And it becomes a marketing piece for your listing presentation. Because sellers want to see what you are doing differently to go above and beyond, right? And what you're generating that somebody else might not be. It's a win for us. It's a win for them, right? It's a win for us. It's a win for them. All right. I know we're talking about a lot of video. <laughs> we're going to talk about video again, right? We're going to talk about video again. Um, why now? Why is right now the right time to sell? I'm going to tell you right now, there's so many different reasons that we could be talking about, right? Appreciation being a big part of that. Right now is a great time to sell if you want to take advantage of the appreciation that you gained in the last year. In fact, in, in, in the United States, appreciation was at 14% in all time record breaking high. Do you want to know what your home is worth? Do you want to take advantage of that? Right now is also a great time to sell because there's so many buyers that are willing to compete on your home because interest rates are low, right? And they're looking for a place to go. There's a lot of different reasons that you can utilize of why right now. I'm going to give you some tips on this. Script your video ahead of time, but do not record again and again and again. People don't need your content to be perfect. People don't need every little thing that you put out there to be edited. There's, this is one of the things, this has been a trend that was studied in video. There was a, a time, right? There was a time when we were studying um, in video that like highly edited videos, highly curated content was what people wanted, right? When, especially when social media first came out. Um, this is not the case anymore. Right now, people want real, people want authentic, right? Um, one of the things you guys hear me when I come on video, I mess up words all the time, right? I, it's not always perfect. I think I said, I, I don't know. I started saying momentum and said momentarily, right? All of those things, it happens in video and it's okay. You want to be authentic. Um, you do want to have a script. Here's why you want to make sure you're hitting your bullet points. What are the things that are most important? 
but it doesn't need to be something where you're reading off that script. You want it to really feel um, like something they could connect with. People also do business with people that they like and trust. So video is a really good way to create rapport and build up that trust level with them as well. Um, one thing that, that is really interesting with video as well is they've studied this. Um, I forgot what school did the study on this, but this was a really great study. I'll have to look it up. One of the things that they said is that people who see you on video consistently create a relationship with you almost as if they were seeing you in person. Now we know Logic makes people think, this is why we still wanna use at least one statistic to kind of back up what we're sharing. And yet emotion makes people act, right? Emotion makes people act. So when we're sharing about what's going on, right? And we're sharing these different statistics and yes, you can introduce yourself but I wouldn't spend too much time on that. Um, what I would really jump into is more so, you know, in case you don't know, National Association of Realtors did a study in home prices have jumped up by over 14% in the last year. Do you know the value of your home? Would you like to? If you were to move and you were to be able to take out some of that cash equity that you gained in the last year, what could that do for your family? Right? What could that do for your lifestyle? Could you move into your dream home? Could you go on a great vacation? Could it just put you in a greater position with your family? Right? Is we want to get to the emotion. So we wanna ask some of those questions to get them to think, right? To get them to think. So that was just an example, jumping in, um, about 60 seconds or less, right? Bite-sized content for this one. All right, number 11, pre-foreclosure still exists, right? Pre-foreclosure still exists. You can track them through county records. Um, and I know, you know, we have a couple lists if you hit at the marketing one, two, three, uh, email account or come see us to help you get some of this information on pre-foreclosures, notice a default, et cetera. I know I was talking with one of you that's actually in process of, of um, just took a listing on one that was thankfully no court confirmation needed. Um, and thankfully there's equity in the property but was able to stop the foreclosure process, right? That's great. This is a good opportunity right now. Mm. About 2% of homeowners are still in some type of active forbearance right now and a good percentage of homeowners are in some type of default, right? Um, that means there are people sitting in your database, sitting in your network, that this is the case, right? People that are in your world that may need your help. Now, some of them may take advantage of the California Mortgage Assistance Program that's available, some of them. Some of them may modify their loans. Either way, those two items are a really good reason to start a conversation, right? To start a conversation. Um, and this is a really good opportunity to be the other option. Not everybody is gonna qualify for mortgage assistance. Not everybody is gonna have the opportunity to, uh, to re remodify their loan. One of the things we talked about at the very beginning, right, was downsizing of payment or of space. Even if they are able to pay off their mortgage, does that mean that that particular mortgage still makes sense for them? So maybe the mortgage assistance program comes into play. They're able to pay off their back to mortgage. They're able to get caught up. And yet for because of what happened with the economy in the last few years, they're still in a really tight position, right? They're still in a position where, hey, this is great that it's paid. And yet they still can't maintain those payments moving forward, or it's putting a lot of undue stress on them as a family. That's a great opportunity to downsize, right, as well. Um, so that's gonna be another piece as well. Open house supply drives. This is another one to get. Uh, so this is a little, for those of you that love community service, because I know a lot of you really lead with your heart on this. Um, this is another lead generation technique. This came from an agent out of Texas. Um, where they did an open house supply drive at their listing. Uh, and this generated more involvement from, guess who? The neighbors. It generated more involvement from the neighbors. The neighbors didn't have their guard up. What, what happened? We knock on a door sometimes and people are like, why are you knocking on my door? Why are you coming? Or they don't open the door. They don't want to talk to you. Or my favorite is the, no, I'm not interested, even though they want to know what their home is worth and they want to go by the open house, right? Sometimes we need to get past that guard that somebody has up. And so this was a technique that came up 
where they started um, using the open house as an opportunity to uh, you know, collect different supplies to donate to a local food pantry. And they were able to generate more relationships and more database ads from other people in that neighborhood that also had that servant heart and take listings from it. Because now they had an emotional relationship. That next step became that logical relationship, right? So this is a little bit of thinking outside the box here. Okay. So looking at marketing, so we're jumping over to some marketing pieces. Uh, difference between, right, lead generation is a little bit more active. Marketing is a little bit more passive. And yet this is going to be really important as well. We want to redefine our value proposition to the now. What does that mean? The mindset of clients has shifted. The mindset of clients has shifted. We have to put ourselves into the mindset of who we are marketing to and who we are prospecting. So I'm going to give you an example of this. If I had been teaching a class, some of you attended the class that I did on expired uh, two weeks ago. If I had been teaching a class on expired five years ago, what I would have said is uh, most people that they have some type that their listing expires, the majority of people will blame their agent. The majority of people will blame their agent. They usually think that they don't get enough exposure on the home and the price was probably too high, right? Five years ago. Now, if I was thinking about an expired now, what has shifted in the last couple of years? What might be a reason that somebody expired in the last two years? Somebody may have expired because maybe somebody got COVID. That's a, actual, that's a real thing right now, right? Maybe somebody got COVID and now they do want to relist their home, but they're more concerned about some of the safety protocols. And so is that something that we're incorporating into our presentation because of that emotional fear factor that people have, right? Maybe there was some uh, type of passing. Maybe they couldn't get the grant deed signed because somebody moved out of town or out of, out of the country and the embassy is closed and they couldn't get the paperwork done, right? Or somebody got COVID and they couldn't get the paperwork done here. This, we talked about this at the last team meeting, right? Remote online notary being an option for them so that they don't have to wait on the embassy so that there's not that sort of delay, that might be another reason that somebody stopped in the middle of a transaction. There could have been a passing, right? And that might be a reason that somebody stopped in the middle of a transaction. Now, this also on the flip side, when we're looking at marketing, right? That's an example for expires. But what about things like, what are the opportunities that people have to sell right now? So we know uh, the eviction moratorium was extended through the end of the year. So if I'm thinking market of the moment and what the opportunity there is there, I know a certain, uh, basically a certain kind of demographic farm that I can go after is absentee owners. And then maybe one of the agreements that I should really get versed on uh, it so that I can speak to it in that presentation in my marketing is how to sell TIP tenant in place, right? How to sell TIP with tenant in place or really understanding the new, uh, the new, you know, eviction moratorium phase one and fa it's two phases, right? Phase one and phase two guidelines and what the opportunity there is for buyers that maybe want to potentially uh, own or occupy what options they have. That may be something that I want to talk about when I'm talking to a seller that is an absentee owner and has tenants, right? I may want to talk about um, some things around, uh, you know, just, just around what are some of the things that you can do to help them still maximize their value with that tenant in place. So that's an example of editing our value proposition to the now, right? Okay. And then know your numbers. I talk about that a lot. <laughs> okay. Create a piece of marketing that speaks to potential fears that a seller might have in the moment. Get testimonials. Be prepared to handle objections that are fear-based. COVID-19, low inventory, market instability, and artificial inflation, right? We talk about this on Mondays a lot, especially with the market instability, um, artificial inflation that's occurred. What are some of the appraisal challenges that we can have? Here's the thing, we wanna generate interest. Logic makes people think, emotion makes people act, right? Emotion makes people act. I, I used to say 
um, there was a quote I used to use when, when you want to kind of coach somebody. I got this from a coaching, uh, one of my own coaches uh, that coached me. And it was something that I used in coaching uh, when I was a productivity coach. Because a lot of times what happens is you have to give somebody, uh, you know, they, they want what they want right? And we tell them what they want and we give them what they need. Have you ever heard that? Tell them what they want and give them what they need. Is This is not, uh, the intention of this marketing technique is not to manipulate somebody into selling because of fear, right? What it is, is to raise the fear and offer the solution, right? Is to raise the fear and offer the solution because sometimes when people are scared about something, uh, it paralyzes them from taking action. And if they don't take action, that can be more detrimental to them in the long run, right? So if there's a fear that they have because of low inventory, and so they don't even start the process, and now all of a sudden, maybe they actually needed to downsize their payments, and they didn't even start the process, and here we are six months later, and now they're underwater and they're struggling, right? Right? That's something that can happen over the long term. So that's part of when we think about these markets of the moment and we think about creating these kind of fear-based marketing pieces, just know that the intention behind it is never to manipulate somebody into selling, but it's to help them get to the solution that's going to be best for them. It's my little disclaimer. Uh, number 16, also in marketing, set sellers up for home searches in the area that they live so that they can stay top of mind. Okay, there's this, this is a fancy little way saying there's a fancy little tool in command called the monthly or bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. When you have an owner's home address, right? When you have an owner's home address, you can automate an email that goes to them and let them know about activity that is happening in their area with new pendings, new solds, new listings, et cetera. And you can set that out to go either monthly or bi-weekly. I don't care if they don't look at it for eight months. I don't care if they don't look at it for eight months because the moment they do is the moment that it piques their interest. It's the moment that they're like, oh my God, my neighbor's home just sold over, oh wow, it sold at, I don't know, 750. I didn't think the properties are worth that much. And they're like, whoa, mind blown. They start clicking it. When they do click on that marketing piece, that is logged in command so that you can log into command and see recently active. So we go over this in the technology class. You guys have seen, some of you have seen me go over this, but it logs that activity so that you can do the great thing of picking up the phone and making a phone call. Not to say, Hey, I saw you were clicking on properties, right? We don't do the creepy thing, we, but we are going to say, hey, I just wanted to go ahead and check in. I don't know if you know, but there's a property down the street. So a pending or sold a property down the street and it actually just sold at 750. That actually affected the value of your home. Would you like an updated market analysis? Would you like to know the value of your home, right? Is it gives us an excuse to call. It gives us an excuse to call and you can follow up with the seller's net sheet. This is really big, or you can follow up with an offer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna know. Um, this is an example I've been sharing. Uh, Nance, I'm gonna give this credit to Nancy. Uh, Nancy Leal was doing a refi on a property for a client. That property was, you know, they were literally right, getting ready to close. An agent showed up at the door with a bona fide offer, a actual written out offer. The property is not listed on the market. They took a look at that net sheet and they're like, yep, yeah, you know what? We're going to sell. And they decided to sell the property because they realized that they could get more cash in selling than they could on the cash out refi. And he's going to go invest it in something else, right? Um, that is a great technique. Sometimes we think somebody is not willing to sell and some of them are not until we show up at their door with an offer. If you have clients that are looking, this is a great technique to utilize as well. Okay. Number 17, I got a buyer post mailers and outreach. Um, this is actually attributed to a phenomenal, phenomenal real estate coach by the name um, of, of uh, oh my gosh, Tony DeCello. Tony DeCello is a mega agent coach. Currently, 
Um, so the post, this is gonna be for mailers and outreach. The actual social media post that was that I attribute to Cody Gibson because that was after um, Tony DeSello's time. Now Tony DeSello was an agent who um, direct. He's a fan, has been like a mega agent here at Keller Williams. Um, but before that, he was at Remax. He was inducted into the Remax Hall of Fame um, for being such an amazing coach. He was a major at one of the top Mike Ferry coaches, and currently with KW Maps Coaching um, and with KW. He is a mega agent coach. What does that mean? Uh, he's one of the guys that coaches the people that are doing transactions in the hundreds and thousands, right? Those are, those are his coaching clients. Uh, and the simple technique that he did to generate listings, I don't have a piece of paper in front of me, so I want you guys to imagine. He did a bifolded sheet of paper that said, I've got a buyer in your area. And then on the flip side, on the inside, when they open it up, it said, James and John and, and, or the, you know, whatever the names were pre-approved for 480,000 FHA looking for three bedroom plus in Downey, California, yeah. right? Uh, the Joneses pre-approved for 550, uh, look at cash, looking for a fixer in, uh, I don't know, Norwalk right? Whatever it might be, but he noted every single one of those fires. And then he went and he door knocked and he mailed that out to the areas that his clients were interested in to generate listings. Now, Cody Gibson, the guy who took 10 listings, <laughs> 10 listings, right? Every single month as his claim to fame, he did this as well and he added one more piece he put it on social media not his business social media his personal social media i've got a buyer looking for x every single week right he posts every single week so if you're doing this you want to make that social media post every single week pick a day pick a day right whatever day and make the post get very specific and then go in if you're going to knock it and you're going to do the mailer, you want to get really specific. I would uh, talk to George about finding people that have owned for five or more years in that area, right? Because you want people that have been there for a while and might potentially be thinking about selling and utilize this, I've got a buyer post. All right, we're getting towards the end, you guys. Oh, wait, I skipped one. Number 18, number 18, be prepared for common objections. We know there are objections right now. Are you prepared for it? Mm. What if the property needs cosmetic repairs, right? We are going to be talking about the Keller Offers Ready to Sell program a lot. We are very lucky. We're in a really unique position um, with having, uh, you know, Pavan's team kind of really heading up his GC team, uh, heading up a lot of the aesthetic repairs. Um, so we're getting that first kind of rollout for KW here in this area. With that being said, what I really want to encourage you to do, I'm going to give you a, a website. It's app, A-P-P, app dot kelleroffers.com. Register and sign up. You have to use your KW email. You can get certified as a Keller Offers agent for free, right? You can be certified for free. There are three types of programs that are available in Keller Offers. One is the ready to sell program. There's the ready to stay program and there's the cash offer program. What if you could differentiate yourself walking into a listing presentation and literally offer, right, the client that the cosmetic repairs will be taken care of before you list the property on the market so that they can get top dollar on their home? This is a huge tool. What if you could offer them a cash offer on their home? This is a massive tool that is available. Right, that is a great objection handler for somebody. We get them all the time. I don't know how many times I've had an agent that walks into the office and says, "Yeah, we were about to take the listing, but you know they want to do some upgrades. Um, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna patch some holes that they have, and they're gonna fix up the patio, and they just want to make sure that the, the grass is drying. So they want to get that taken care of. And what happens now? All of a sudden, it's taking them a month or two months that there's not a listing agreement in place." that somebody else can walk in the door and take that listing. 
What if we could stop that at the beginning and take the listing and handle those repairs for them, right? Objection handler. Um, commission, we know that tends to happen. Do you have your scripts and objection handlers in place and what your solution is when you're discussing commission objections? What does that look like? Is that something that you're practicing regularly, right? I've seen a lot of different techniques around this. Here's what you don't want. That in the moment, you're like, oh, oh, yeah, let me do, you know, yes, let me go ahead and do that discount. Or yes, because we, we all of a sudden we become the yes person because we don't have our objection handlers ready. Now, what if we had an objection? I, and I've seen different ways of doing this, right? Is I've seen the very uh, high driver personality. Well, my commission is 3%. This is what we charge on, on a portion of this goes to marketing, et cetera. What would you like to give the selling agent, right? I've seen that technique. I've seen somewhere we talk about, um, you know, the level of service that they're going to get. There's a lot of different ways that you can tackle this, but you have to have some practice in this. That's the most important part, right? Timeline, timeline. A lot of people get tripped up over their timeline right now, right? Oh, I want to sell, you know, next year. Oh, I want to sell here. Are we dealing with those objections? And what does that look like? What is the impact of somebody waiting? right, to sell? Do we know what's going to happen with home values, right? Nobody's got a crystal ball. And yet, do we have some methodology to speak to that? Um, I see, can we see the website again? I'm going to go ahead and type it in. Yes, it's app at app.kelleroffers.com, right? App.kelleroffers.com. Okay. Replacement home. That's huge too. Right, replacement home is going to be really big as well. Um, that as a contingency is very, very uh, difficult right now. Now, might we have other solutions? Might there be a little digging we can do? Right, you know, we know we want, we know you want to get top dollar and you want to get the best home um, that you can find. We want to find you that perfect home. If it came down to getting you top dollar, we didn't have your perfect home selected yet. Is there a family member that you might be able to move in with for a little bit? Right? Is there another option? What does that look like for you? Because when you're trying to close two transactions concurrently, if this was a higher inventory market, that is a great solution, right? And yet there's not as much inventory as is necessary right now. So we run into some challenges here. Here's the thing. I would rather though you take the listing even contingent than not, because that is also going to give you leverage to take more listings. Right, it's gonna give you leverage to take more listings. So I, I just wanna go in and, and share that piece as well. Uh, one note, so I see some of you guys are already signing up for the Keller Offers program. Our market center number is 561, right? It's gonna ask you for the market center number. Great question. Okay, mastering follow-up. So we got two more. We're coming on right to the end, mastering follow-up. And as we come to the end, I want you guys to be thinking whether you put this in the chat or you feel like coming off mute or sharing um, that what are some of the things that you are going to implement this week, right? That you're going to implement this week to really uh, support taking more listings in your business and marketing to more sellers. So mastering follow-up, reach out to anyone who has sent you a referral in the last two years and just Thank them for the referral. You guys, you have no idea how huge of an impact this will have when we just get into the habit of having more conversations with the people that are already sending us business, that are already trusting us, right? You want to call anybody that has ever given you a referral and thank them and have a conversation and you can ask for more referrals because guess what? The average person knows 200 people. The average person knows at least 200 people. Now I wanna make sure that if any of those 200 people ask them about real estate, they're calling me, right? Um, and if you have the budget for it, you can always do like a nice little you know, surprise with it as well. That's going above and beyond. If you don't have the budget for it, don't worry about that right now. But the, the best part is just ask them, thank them, and then ask for the referral. But start with that gratitude. I promise you that if you make a call and you just say, 
hey, you know what? I, you were on my mind and I wanted to thank you um, for everything that you've done for me. I wanted to thank you for sending me client, whatever their name was. Um, you know what? They were phenomenal to work with. We're really excited. We got them into a house and, you know, we really were able to get them into a house um, or we helped them sell their house for $35,000 for $35, above asking, whatever it is, right? Is now we're having that conversation. And guess what? It is a real estate conversation. It is bringing you back to being top of mind, right? Okay. Last but not least, this is a, a really big one as well, right? To anyone you have run a CMA for <laughs> in the last three years or more, send a new one, send a new one and drop it off at their house. Anyone you have run a CMA for in the last three years or more, run another one and drop it off at their house. If you did 100 CMAs, you have 100 people you could do. If you did five, go do five, right? Whatever this is, because here's the thing, the values have changed. I guarantee you that if you did that CMA a year ago or two years ago, I guarantee you the values have changed. We know that, right? And the majority of them, I'd say uh, I would be, in, almost guaranteed that all of them have gone up. Almost guaranteed, right? Almost guaranteed. It, there's very few areas where we've seen, a, there are some where we've seen a de decrease, right? But there's very few right now. The value of their home has gone up. Why not update their CMA with your updated marketing message on why? Now, here's the thing. When I talk about marketing, I don't, this does not, don't get stuck in the details of this and have that stop you. This doesn't have to be a fancy graphic piece. This could be a simple letter that is literally written with your letterhead on it, right? It could be very, very simple, but with the updated CMA, do not get stuck in the details on this, right? Don't get stuck in the details on this. Now, what if you've not run a CMA for anybody in the last three years? I get it. It happens, right? Um, send five minimum, one a day, five days a week, five unsolicited CMAs every week. And I would drop these. I would knock it, right? I would drop these because people do not know the value of their home and they want to, they, they estimated is that over 70% of people don't know the value of their home. That's a lot of people. And with home appreciation being the highest it's ever been. That one thing, when somebody sees a number that they weren't expecting, not phone number, I mean the number on the CMA, and they're like, oh my gosh, my home is worth what? That creates massive curiosity. Logic makes people think, emotion makes people act. I might be putting some stuff in that little letter that I send with my CMA of if you were to sell, what could the money do for your family? Right. So five. Uh, now, if you've never done CMAs before, right, come see if we can help you with this. And there, I know there's a class coming up on the calendar for CMAs. Um, with this being said, right, if run the updated CMAs, uh, if this is something you've never done a CMA before and you're going to do them now moving forward, send five a week. Find people. Right. Here's, this is a really interesting technique I saw in the insurance industry once. Uh, and I was like, that's, it's so interesting that people do this. And I have had multiple friends and colleagues over the year that, that have done this, right? Uh, they'll call and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing, I, I got my, they, so this is something that happens is I've been practicing my presentation and in insurance. And I'd love to be able to share you know, that presentation with you as a friend and get your honest feedback. And they're like, will you meet with me for coffee? Now, generally I will say this, the first time I ever went, I was like, yeah, sure. And then I was like, oh, this is a pitch right now, right? This is a practice pitch, but this is a pitch. Um, I've gone to plenty of those over the years with friends. I, I tend to say yes, because here's the thing. If I was to call them and do the same, I'd want them to say yes to me too, right? You can do that with people in your network. You have friends, family, people that are in your sphere of influence that you have that close of a relationship with is, hey, you know what I'm doing? Uh, value analysis for people in my, in my area. You're obviously somebody that I care about. Would it be okay if I tried it with you? And all of a sudden they're like, 
my house is worth what? Right, this happens, this happens. No, so if you're newer, that's okay, right? To, to have a little bit more of that conversation because the more you get into those conversations, the, the bigger the impact is gonna be and you will see those results over time, right? This is all about consistency, time on task. I said, the more at bats you have, the more chances you have to hit the ball. You just need to get yourself at bat more. So with that being said, my friends, take action. I want you to pick two or three things that you are gonna take action on over the next week. What questions do I have? What ahas do I have? What are you guys taking action on? I'm like, where am I looking at? I'm looking at the wrong camera. I, I know some of you guys just signed up for the Keller Offers uh, class because I saw that happening. Not all at once, my friends. All right. All right. No, going once. Going, and, oh, and I'm gonna note, you guys, I do have, so I saw the question in the comment um, for the app at app.kelleroffers.com. Please let me know once you finish the certification on it. We're gonna be talking about that on our team meeting on Tuesday as well um, with that certification program. And we're getting some, some extra help. So I'm gonna note, this is like a huge program that's available for you right now to add into your listing presentation right? It's a huge asset. Um, so we are going to be covering it a lot because this is going to be a main differentiator um, that kind of sets you apart from a solution that most agents will not be able to offer. Um, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal program. Um, with that being said, a couple of reminders. We have our team meeting on Tuesday at 3 p.m., we are gonna have Louis Lujan, the Government Affairs Director for the Association. Um, here he's gonna be giving a legislative update. There is a lot that is going on, not just locally in Downey, but at the, at the state level that is impacting us in real estate. And so I wanted to bring him out so that he could share, um, share a little bit from Straight From The Horses Out. He's at a lot of those meetings um, that are going on to really give us that insight. Uh, and the other save the date, that I want, and that'll be, sorry, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Uh, we're also starting our 100K plus program. Please take a look at the calendar. That's gonna include classes on CMAs, uh, pricing, listing presentation, et cetera. That'll be happening on Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. with a call session right before that for those that wanna do calls together. And that will be live here in the main area. Uh, and then the second thing, so this is a save the date. We do not have the agenda yet. Uh, obviously we know our office is open to us and we are gonna be doing a grand reopening as well as full day of events on March 8th. On March 8th, you guys are the first to, to hear about it because we'll be announcing that at the team meeting. With that, I hope you guys all have a phenomenal, phenomenal rest of your day. Please, please, please send me a message so we can get you your raffle ticket for a class, my friends. All right. Bye, you guys. Let me stop recording.